hello 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 welcome back to my channel so for christ i'm so happy that you are here if you are watching this on youtube please make sure that you click the subscribe button if you're watching this on facebook then please just go to where my name is located um click on it and you will be after this video though click on it and you'll be taken to my facebook page make sure that you just click like and also select to follow this facebook page Sophie for Christ. All right, so today, yes, it's another conversation, and the Lord has me focused on a particular scripture since last week. I knew that He would want me to speak on it this week, and that scripture is Proverbs 13, verse 22, and I'm going to read it. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Yes. I'm not going to go into my usual teaching. But I just want us to consider that, especially in relation to real estate. Another thing, the second part of the scripture says, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. I know you like to think of the whole idea of, yes, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, and I'm serving the Lord and I'm just. Please, my fellow Christians, let it not be that we are waiting on Jesus. To even just transfer the wealth from the wicked to the just and transfer it to us. Yeah, let us make sure that we are being good stewards of what he has put into our hands. So that should that transfer come, it is just Jara, as they say in Nigeria. Or it is just Brata, as we say in Jamaica, on what the Lord has blessed us to be doing with our own resources. Quick story time. So my mom, God rest her soul, she died in 2009 due to breast cancer and she was a dear lady you know honestly she loved the lord and everything but i remember once we were having a conversation i believe i was so weird by probably finishing up first degree going to the second one and she in conversation mentions that when mona heights was being developed as a scheme she was in a road and working as support and I was like, so did you try and see if you could get some ADHD or something like that? And she was like, no. She just assumed that it's just rich people think that. Now, when you consider that Mona is now also expensive and it's one of the desired communities to live in, you know, I just look at it and like, ah. <laughs> Who knows if she had just tried? Who knows? You know the word of God says faith without works is dead and we know that we do a lot of praying in the body of Christ We pray, we pray, we pray for those of us who are Holy Ghost filled with speaking our tongues uh, We decree and we declare with all of those things But at the end of the day our faith needs to be worked out. We need to put some action to those words of faith that we're declaring. So it's not just enough that we are speaking prosperity we're speaking growth we're speaking these wonderful things but then when it comes to getting boots on the ground and getting stuff done we're like uh 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 can't bother we'll do it next day and we procrastinate until years go by opportunities pass us by and then the things that we should have done to lay the foundation for the next generation and subsequent generations so come we did do it i can tell from experience it is very difficult starting from ground zero because i can look across and see peers yeah they're further ahead and part of the reason that they're further ahead they got a start meaning that they were starting from ground zero they were starting from some platform that was put in place by their parents whether if it's in terms of assets or in terms of i guess certain networks and so forth so then they propel ahead because you know the framework was there for them to succeed they did work hard they do work hard themselves but it's just easier when you have certain things in place so then I consider a little quick example because we're thinking back to the whole real estate thing if you have two two young ladies and one is able to live with her parents and the other has to be going out and renting in order to be working in a corporate area then of course the one who doesn't have to pay rents will be able to transition to home ownership much quicker for herself. This is a case where we need to be proactive in not just looking at circumstances as, oh, I am poor. Please, can we just stop with this idea of certain things being for those people or rich people or something like that? The blessings of the Lord, they're there. 
the Lord provides for us all. But in a lot of cases, some of the provisions of God, you'll only access them when you take certain steps. And sometimes when you're coming from the background of not having the financial resources and so forth, you're going to have to make some faith moves in order to see certain things being done. And like I said, because you're serving Jesus and you have faith in the Lord and you're believing God to do this thing, but then you need to back it up with some actions. As you would know, the government of Jamaica has increased the NHT limit to 6.5 million per person at max. So that means that if you have a husband and wife, they can get 13 million at most. And of and course, another development that happened this year, 2020, earlier in the first quarter, I believe, or it was probably at the start of the second quarter, the government also announced that the NHG interest rates, whereas they were maxing out at 5%, I believe, from 1 to 5%, that now they would be going from 0 to 4% according to your income bands. The 0 to 4% interest rates apply to persons who have never owned real estate state before or they don't have a title in their name so if you have the right income level then you could possibly end up with an allocation of 6.5 million at zero percent which you may be looking at it and say sophia we live in a jamaica where i say anything for 6.5 well there are no buff new developments that are coming up that will be around that nht amount they're quite tiny, I understand, but the point is to make a start. And plus, you don't know. You get the NHT allocation, you may be able to get a joint mortgage with a financial institution. The point is just try. So my mom was a domestic helper, so I have a special place in my heart for persons who are domestic helpers, janitors, cleaners, you know, persons who society would be said, oh, these are the ones who do these dirty job so to speak but there is no such thing as a dirty job because all job was it's honest it's honorable and you're working your honest bread now there are also higglers and taxi men and you know bus drivers and all of these other persons who are informally self-employed or in some cases informally employed so then you don't have the facility of having the regular nht nis education tax and those things coming from your paycheck for you and in that case you would have to take the steps to contribute to the nht for yourself before you're able to access any of those funds back in the day it used to be that you could just go up to NHT and just sign up to be contributing directly to them. However, the government has caught rid of that. So now you can no longer do that. You have to go through the tax office. Now, this now, is where a lot of persons get quite iffy because they say, oh, we don't want to pay tax, we don't want to pay tax. But taxes are part of our lives and we should be willing to play our part in the whole development of our country of Jamaica. So I believe, yes, it paid taxes. Even for uh, myself, when I was going through this process a little while back, that it was kind of convoluted because it's online and then there was some sort of number of steps and all of that in order to be able to contribute to NHT and of course you pay NIS and education tax. And let me and just point out to you, you only pay income tax when your income is 1.5 million and above per annum. Now, if you are self-employed, meaning you drive taxi or you drive bus or anything like that, or you know, you're a carpenter, you have some sort of workshop or you're a higgler or something like that, just know that that 1.5 million, that's the threshold, it is calculated based on your net profit. That means that what you earn, from your doing your business minus your cost of doing business. So like for the taxi man, that would be cost of gas, cost of vehicle repairs, um, your lunch throughout the day and so forth. For the Higglers, that's of course the cost of transportation, of course, the cost of you buying the goods to sell, and other things that you can legitimately say that it's a part of the whole cost of doing business. All right, so I don't want this video to be too long. So if you would like me to do another video explaining how you would sign up as a self-employed person so that you can contribute to the NHT, please make sure to like this video and leave your comment below, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, just leave your comments below so that I can see where your interest lies if you would like to learn more. And of course, if there is any other thing that you would like me to talk about, discuss, I'll go ahead and try to do the necessary research and then come back and share with you. Now, please remember to like this video, 
Please remember to also leave your comments and share, share, share. Sharing is caring. So until we meet again next week, may his blessings, peace, and wisdom be upon you all. Bye-bye.